say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We have a special night tonight. You know what, this is a night about celebrating those who came before us. We're talking about grandparents. We're talking about our elderly parents. We're talking about those who paid their dues and built this country and paved the way for us to have life easier. Every generation has had life easier and easier. We forget, we forget how tough they had it 90, 100, 75, 50 years ago. With that being said, as a kid, as an adult, I always look to those who are older than me for information and wisdom. Trust me, they have it. Tonight we're going to Fleming County to visit with somebody special for some mighty special fried apple pies and a few stories to boot. We're in Fleming County in the home of Georgia, Helen Conley. Everybody calls her Helen, mm -hmm. correct? And Brock. He's here too. He's here too. Now he's standing <laughs> over there. He's going to make sure that we make no He's supervising. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, what are we making tonight? Fried apple pies. One of my favorite things in the world. Is it? First right. of all, thanks for having you. Uh, yeah. For having us thank, in your kitchen. Thank you for coming. Bringing us off the street where it was really thank cold. You. It's nice and warm in here. <laughs> Thank now, you. fried apple pies is probably mm -hmm. something you've been eating all your life. Yes. Uh -huh. And did your mom make them? Yes, my mother made them. Your grandmother mm -hmm. probably before mm -hmm. her? I'm sure she did. Now, were mm -hmm. these a special treat or is this something you had fairly often? Or? Oh, we had them often. Well, we dried quite a bit of apples. And then when we have a church function up the shelter house, we take fried apple pies. Most everybody likes them. I don't know anybody that doesn't like them. No. And if they don't, they need to be taken to the doctor and examined. <laughs> <laughs> now, you like your... Dried apples. Do you dry your own apples? Oh, yes. I dry my really? own apples. Let's and take I, a look at those. And then I soak them overnight. Takes them a while, you know, to cook. And to then bring you, them back? you have to let them cool before you put them in your dough. Right. Then you couldn't put a hot apple in, a, in your dough, did it all come apart. Now, how did you dry your apples? We've got a dehydrator. Got a dehydrator. Mm -hmm. How long does that take? About 24 hours. About 24 hours. About 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what are, what are the ingredients here? It looks, I mean, I know it's... You want me to start? Yeah, let's start. Okay. I'll give you them if you want. I'll take them. Okay. <laughs> I'll be glad to have them. Well, we're taking flour out, and I'm going to sift it to make my... And I'm using white lily flour, and it's self-rising. Some people use this plain, but I just use self-rising, and then I roll it out as much as I can. Now, Helen, you're kind of the type, like me, you don't measure. You just do things as you go along. Yes, sure do. I don't measure. Yeah. I just, as, just as I think of it. Get my spoon and make me a little hole in it. I always use some milk and put a little cooking oil in there. I guess I better turn my stove on to have my skillet hot and prime. It might not be good if I didn't prime. What kind of oil do you use? Canola. Canola oil? Uh, yeah, cooking oil. And it takes quite a bit. Now you're 92, mm -hmm. and your husband's 95. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, they say, oh, you can't eat this, and you can't do that, and you can't do this, and you can't do that. You probably ate lard most of your life, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I'll get my milk to have to make my dough with. Just to kind of make it, help it a little. Now you want to use as much milk as many pies. More milk you make, more pies you can make. Uh -huh. So I do, I'll not make a full cup, so I'll just use that. Now I'm going to put my milk in my 
flour and stirring it up. Getting it ready to make my pies with. Is this where your mom did it? Yes, the way my mother did. Now, what was her name? Addie. Addie? Mm -hmm. What year? Addie, Addie Lois, and then her mother is named Lois, as after my grandmother. And today would have been my daddy's birthday. And he was born in 1896. Wow. 17th of January. Wow. -y. So I'm 92. Well, you look like you're about 58. Oh boy, thank you, thank you. Now, uh, don't, don't go to extremes. <laughs> you make me feel like I'm young and then I might think I'm young and I can't do what I used to do. Well, let's not go out and try to jump a fence. No. Uh, <laughs> That's interesting how you're doing that. You're just kind of taking it in. Yeah, it, just a little bit at a time. I used to make biscuit every morning when the children was home this way make my biscuits for breakfast of the morning. So you're just pulling it in gradually? Mm -hmm, just a little. You get it thick. See, I learned something. The great thing about doing this show, Helen, uh -huh. is everybody does things different. I'm sure they do. This rolling pin, my father got me for that when we first married, and he got it at a yard sale. So I really don't know how old that is. So do you and remember we, what we year? We'll soon be married 73 years wow. in March. So I've had this same thing. Well, that's my apples after I've already cooked them. I'll put them in the and fry them till they get brown. So you scoop just enough out to make you about yeah. a... Yeah, mm -hmm. and I try to roll them out just as thick as thin as I can handle them. Mm -hmm. They want to stick sometimes, so I change sides with them. Now, what'd you get, if you can remember, kids are so spoiled today, they get hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of stuff for Christmas. What, what do you remember getting for Christmas? I can remember maybe a stick of candy or... A, a stick we, of candy? Uh -huh. One we stick would, of candy. Uh, hang our stockings up on the mail, and Dad would put like an orange and an apple in that, and you know, that just tickled us to death to get that. Now, growing up, when did you, do you remember getting electricity? I, we didn't get electric till uh, or see, our second son was born on the big run. Now, was that a big, was that a pretty big deal? Oh, get, it really meant a lot to us. What, what was your thoughts when you went over and turned that light switch for the first time? We just, they just had a bulb in the ceiling. Yeah. We just thought that's wonderful. For we just had a coal all length, you know. Yeah. I don't know how the kids went to school, I mean, and learned of that. Yeah. I don't know. What is it about the dried apples, Helen, that makes it better? It's just the way it is. It just is. has a different flavor, I mm -hmm. think. Some people use as applesauce, but I just always use dried my apples and fix them that They're way. better with the dried apples, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Turn my pies are getting brown. Ooh, yum. Helen, where'd you go to school at? Goddard. Goddard? Mm-hmm. The old school is gone now. The old school's gone? Mm-hmm. They've um, got that where the school used to be. It's in part of the cemetery that Goddard. Yeah. What year did you uh, graduate? I, just, I went to the eighth. Well, that's, that mm -hmm. was pretty... You know, we, they still have eighth grade educations where I went to school in eastern Kentucky because that's usually as far as people went. Then I they, know. Then they started working in the fields or wherever. Oh, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with hard work, do you? No, I don't. I think it's good for you. I think it would help a lot of them. It's, on welfare, put it that way, if they work a little bit. There you go. Well, Helen, those things are sitting there looking at me now. I don't know how long I can hold off and try. Well, I want you to eat them. That's why I'm fixing them. Oh, for I want to eat them. Well, eat them. <laughs> Just quick as they cool. Can I bring them over here? Them. Yeah, if you want to. They're probably a little hot right now. That right there. It just, I made a mess, Helen. I'm sorry. That's all right. That right there just tastes old fashioned. It's, I remember, it seems like everywhere we went in, in years ago, 
the grandma was making fried mm -hmm. apple pies, and mm -hmm. I remember that mm -hmm. taste. Mm -hmm. In your apples, when you put the water back in them, did you put any spices in there? I put cinnamon. Just cinnamon? Mm -hmm. How much cinnamon? I just sprinkle it over them. I don't measure it. Sometimes there's a difference in the cinnamon. If it's mm -hmm. stronger than others, you know, you don't have to take as much. So you just kind of do it to taste. Uh -huh. how, much, yeah. how much sugar did you, that's probably a couple cups. How much sugar did you put in that? Well, I just took a tablespoon and just dipped it out and put it in there. Just guessed at it. Oh my goodness. And then you can taste it, you know, to see if it's mm -hmm. enough or not. You think it's sweet enough? I think it's perfect. I thought it was. Perfect. Mm -hmm. If you had a chance to tell the kids today to, to over all that you've seen over all the years, what would you say is the best lesson a kid could learn today? What do they need to know today? I think they need to pay attention to what their parents tell them. Seems to me like a lot of kids are telling their parents what to do nowadays. Well, they do. <laughs> Maybe two and three year old. Oh, yeah. It's a shame. Do you remember the parents getting a switch out of a tree? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd do wonders. What happened around here? What what was a big event that happened around Goddard in your lifetime that stuck out in your in your in your memory? Just when I got married, I guess. <laughs> you got married, and that was seventy three years ago. Yeah, so it'll be. Would you marry him again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He seems like a pretty good guy. Yeah, I think he has been. And mm -hmm. he helps you out a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you what, we thank you so much for sharing your recipe. I with might us. have a flower on my hand. That's all right. I have a flower on my hand. Thank you so much for visiting with us and telling well, the story. Well, I appreciate you all coming. Well, I appreciate you having us out. Maybe we can visit in the summer. We'll do some other kind of yes, recipe. Yes, uh-huh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you so much for letting us visit. Now, we talked uh, last week about our little contest we're going to have. We've got a couple people that have told us some different restaurants. Here is the contest in a nutshell. Tell us your favorite restaurant. I want them to have fresh ingredients. I want it to be an interesting little place where we can go visit that we might not have heard of. And here's what we've got so far. We have Hillbilly Tea, downtown Louisville, submitted by Molly Witt. We have Lick Skillet Cafe in Brandenburg by Elizabeth Bell. And Paul Cook wants us to check out Little Dave's in McDaniel, Kentucky. Now we're starting to get some in, but this is a good time to tell you about our Facebook page. Go to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page, like it, Look for our little entry where we talk about the restaurant, post your favorite restaurant, and tell us why we should visit it. And if we pick your restaurant, we're going to come visit. We're going to do a little video. We're going to sit down with you, have dinner, and bring you a Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen gift packet. Don't forget to check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com to check out recipes you might not have seen before or some segments you might not have seen. Now, in the same spirit tonight of celebrating folks who have been there and done that and come up through hard times, and come out wiser and smarter, let's go to Perryville. Now we've had a lot of questions about this particular piece. A lot of people are very interested to see sauerkraut made, but they had some questions. One of the questions with this particular segment is, how long does Lois keep her sauerkraut stored before you eat it? The answer is six weeks. Watch this, sauerkraut. Hey, it's not summertime, we're not growing cabbage, but go to the store, buy you some, make you some kraut. We are right outside the garden of the famous gardener, Bobby Joe Ellis. <laughs> Thanks for being with us today. <laughs> and you, you know what? One of my favorite things to eat at any given time of the year is sauerkraut. Okay. And you were telling me about the whole process. now. Different people do it different ways. Some people used to put it in these big vats and let it bubble and boil. In the big, used to put it in the big crock. Right. But we don't do that anymore, but our ancestors did. Right. Yeah. You've got it down to a simple science. And first of all, you got to grow it yeah. in Bob Joe's garden. It looks mighty good. That's mighty good looking cabbage. Now tell us, uh, step us through the process if you will. I see you got a food processor here. Yes. And we cut this, we'll cut this up into smaller pieces before it will go through the processor. You know, in the old days, there, we, didn't have, we didn't have refrigeration like we did. People right. looked for ways to, to store their vegetables, and this was one way you could put cabbage up 
and have it year round. Right, exactly right. Without having to worry about refrigeration. and So you use everything but the, but the core of that, yeah, every bit of it. And a lot of people cut the core out and put it on the inside of that. And really? the, the children will hunt for that when they get ready to eat crowd. No kidding. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly right. So we got a we got a nice size bowl. How much will that make? A couple jars? Uh, about, I'd say four. Four jars. Yeah. Now in your garden that we saw here, you have a row of cabbage. Right. Now you will, will you plant lake cabbage too? Yeah, I'll plant uh, fall cabbage and uh, broccoli and cauliflower. Gotcha. So we take this inside now, and we figure out where we pack that into jars. Right. And that's up to Lois. Uh, you got that right. That's, that's all hard. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll hand that to you, and let's go inside and see what Lois is going to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Lois Ellis, we have graduated to the kitchen. <laughs> We've come from outside. He keeps all the mess out there, which I'm... I'm sure you I appreciate, yeah, I appreciate absolutely. that. He does that when he's making tomato juice or whatever. He does. He leaves a mess out there, and that's how you all have been successfully married for as long as you have. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe so. That's part of the reason. <laughs> that's part of the reason. Now, I like to see families working together, and you know, part A's out here, part B, C, D, E to Z is in here. Mm -hmm. Now, we're obviously making kraut. Mm -hmm. now, in the old days, people used to use crocs and all, you don't have to do that now. You've got your ways figured out. But one thing I'm curious about is I was talking to your husband and son and they were talking about the signs. Mm -hmm. Now there's calendars where you can look at these signs and there's uh, almanacs, farmers almanacs, things like that. That's correct. What are the signs uh, when it has to do with, with, with this? What do you want to do when you're making your sauerkraut? You want to make sauerkraut when the signs are uh, in the light of the moon and not below the heart. Any sign from the top of the head to the heart is fine. And your kraut will stay white and crisp if you do that. And when you get below that, uh, it will get soft and turn color, kind of brownish. Without fail, every time. It, it always has for us. What's, what, is this gonna be a little darker because of the signs, this particular batch of kraut? Yes, last week, I think uh, about uh, the 14th was the last day that it was in the heart, and it went below the heart, the 15th. You got your jars sterilized. Yes, I have. Caps and lids, <laughs> everything's ready to go. Now what do we do? Okay, we're gonna put a teaspoon of canning salt in the bottom of every jar, and that's our preservative. And that's your preservative, and you're just gonna pack that as full as you can possibly get it. As full as I can possibly get it, and we like to put uh, some of the stalk in there. The children like to find pieces of the stalk in there. Do they get a prize? <laughs> well, they think that's the prize. <laughs> They've all, all our children have always enjoyed that, and now the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren enjoy that. Now, with this kraut, it has to kind of ferment a little bit. So mm -hmm. you're gonna get a little smell, you're gonna get something just a little bit different. Tell us the process, and once you pour your hot boiling water in, what happens after that? Okay, uh, then you seal it. And, and you, you put it somewhere in a dark place. Uh, we have put it under the house. And we, we put ours now out in the garage in cabinets that's real dark. And I'm putting that knife down in there. That'll give me some more room for my boiling, boiling, water. boiling water that I'm going to pour over it right, right now. And I'll pour water just all the way up to the top. Right. Now in the process, while it's tucked away in the dark somewhere, um, some of this water will boil out. Mm -hmm. So do you need to put something underneath it that'll catch that water? Uh-huh, it'd be good if you set it on uh, paper or something like that because a little of the water will come out. And, and you've got just a little bit of, of dark right on the top. It's good, but it's not pretty. As, this, uh, as you put this in, in a dark place, temperature-wise, can it be hot, cold, whatever? Does it matter temperature-wise? or Somewhere where it won't freeze. Gotcha. So temperature, if it gets hot out in your garage or wherever, that's fine. Uh-huh. And that allows some of that fermentation. Now, it's not going to seal, right? Well, it may seal in the beginning, but once that seal breaks loose, that's no problem, correct? That's right. That's no problem. Uh, when you get it this winter, your, uh, your lid will be loose, probably. Uh, and you'll think, oh, is that good or not if you haven't done this before, but it will always be good. Now, I would imagine that 
your jars don't last too long because it's so good. So <laughs> last, I mean, last year's is pretty much going to be gone shortly, or do you have some left from last year? Uh, we have 12 jars. 12 jars. That, that's, and I'm giving you one, so now mm -hmm. we have 11. Now, how long can that last? Usually, I mean, if I'm making sauerkraut, I'm going to eat it all the first season. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll have my, is that kind of the way you plan it, to have all of it eaten by the next year? That's right. So you wouldn't want to keep it two or three years, you think, probably that first year? No, no, I wouldn't want to keep it any more than two years. Gotcha. So that is so simple. And Lois, I like simple. Oh, well, we do too. Because I'm a simple man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's run through it one more time. Okay. Grow your cabbage. Even if you don't have your cabbage, Go to the farmer's market, or so you can do this yourself. We have done that. Yeah. We have done that. We so know, done that. and it's nice to know where you get it sometimes. Mm -hmm. If your neighbors raise it, maybe trade some tomatoes or however that works. Bring your cabbage get outside, mm -hmm. put it through the food processor, mm -hmm. get it like that, bring it in, have your, your jars are already sealed. Uh -huh. Tell us again from that point on. Okay, the jars, uh, you have them sterilized, sterilized and ready, and your water boiling. You put the teaspoon of salt in Canning the jar. Salt. Canning salt. Uh huh, and uh, and then you tamp the jar just as tight as you possibly can, and put the boiling water over that, and seal it, and put it somewhere for it to work. Where you don't mind smelling it. That's bit. right. <laughs> That's right, and in a dark place. In a dark place. Uh huh. Now we're going to talk more about these signs because I find that fascinating, and it's a very involved process. And uh, uh, your son Matt has a, a calendar from Big Three Tractor, mm -hmm. and they print this, and the signs are on them. Mm -hmm. So there's ways and places to find these things, and you have put me on a mission now to find out more about this. So that's a, that will be an upcoming segment. You can't go wrong with that. Oh yeah, I mean, signs are biblical. Yes, and, and you can't go wrong with that. Well, I'll tell you what, I appreciate the tip on that, and we'll get to going on that. And how do you like to fix your sauerkraut when you have it? Oh, we like to uh, fix it with Polish sausage. We like it with pinto beans and cornbread. Mm -hmm. Quick and easy country recipe, right out of the garden. New potatoes just dug up and cabbage. Now, mm -hmm. not all your cabbage goes towards sour sauerkraut. What is this wonderful smelling dish right here? Uh, that's cabbage cooked in the oven, and that makes it easy. Yeah. And uh, it, it just has salt, pepper, and a little squeezed margarine over it. Now, what temperature do you cook it and how long? 350, and I cook it for at least an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. Covered, uncovered? Covered. Gotcha. My husband likes it crunchy, and, and we, we have to, you know, kind of test it. Test it every now and then and see how it is. So just cabbage and potatoes, do you put anything in there juice-wise? Uh, no. No water, no nothing? No. Can I have some of that, Lord? You sure can. Did I'd you love for you to try. I will try it. Yeah, all this came out of the garden this morning. What a good side to any dinner. Uh-huh. It is great side. In my case, lunch. <laughs> In your case, lunch. Early yeah, lunch. All right, I'm going to try that. <laughs> I already know I like it because I can smell it. But that's fresh out of Bob Joe's garden. Lois? simple but magic. Very simple. I could eat that whole pan. <laughs> well, you're welcome to it. Mm -mm -mm. Get your cabbage and potatoes right out of the garden, farmer's market, cook this up for any side. I think I can make a meal out of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lois. You're so welcome. <laughs> now, remember to respect your elders. Go visit them, give them a hug, sit down, listen to them, write things down, get their stories before they're gone, get their recipes. Learn, learn, learn about their past. And remember, it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. We'll see you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to CKY Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm.